Welcome to New Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simarca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com. Soho, Brand Studio. Whitebackdrops.com Ramio Moon is a Lebanese photographer based in Richmond, Virginia, USA. His original profession is a prosthodontist and he teaches full-time at an academic institution in Richmond. His photography journey started in 2015 when he used a monetary award from his dental graduation to buy his first camera. His photography passion evolved to become mainly about the moon and space. He does most of his photography from his telescope in his backyard. In addition to photography, he produces short storytelling videos about his astrophotography, which gained a lot of popularity on social media. He has numerous editorial contributions to magazines and well-known media companies like Adobe. Welcome to the Noah Watermark Photography Podcast. Rami Amun, astrophotographer. And welcome, Rami Amun, astrophotographer, to the No Watermark Photography Podcast. Uh, this is the first episode for me in this series, the take on of the Spanish uh, podcast, Simarca de Agua. And I'm really glad that you uh, accepted the invitation to be here. Uh, I really admire your uh, journey and everything that you have done, especially on social media. And uh, on TikTok, you are really big. You are almost like a million followers. I was checking lately, and that is amazing because it is beautiful everything that you do. And uh, welcome to the to this episode, Rami. I'm so happy to have you here. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you in your podcast. Thank you. Okay, let's start with this uh, interview because. Um, Maybe there are some uh, interested in astrophotography, and we would like to know how everything started with you, with your journey as an astrophotographer. You are original profession, as I read on the uh, intro of your uh, uh, biography, is that you are a prosthodontist, right? And sure. you and you teach uh, full time at an institution. And aside that, uh, this is your outlet, right? Like uh, being an astrophotographer. Correct. Correct. Okay. And. Yeah, and uh, the way it started is I, I finished dental school in 2015. Yes. And um, I always wanted to learn photography and I took an online course. The, uh, the instructor in that course said, mm -hmm. you know, photography can have many branches. It can, you know, you can do animal photography, you can do, you know, children photography, yes. portrait. And then he said, you know, just get your camera and just go shoot. So that's what I did. I used mm -hmm. to I used to go shooting every day uh, a little bit before sunset because mm -hmm. that time is called the golden hour. Mm -hmm. That time the sunlight is soft and, you know, you get that golden color in your pictures. So I started going and shooting at that time. I used to shoot, you know, um, everywhere in Southern California. I would take the camera with me. I went in the streets of LA, took pictures there. Um, mm -hmm. And then one day the sun, the sun set and I had a tripod and I mm -hmm. saw the moon. Okay. I saw the moon. I took a picture of the moon and my camera had a zoom in range. Yes. So I took a picture and, it, and I really liked it. It, it, it made me, it, it gave me a, a, a different happy feeling. Mm -hmm. so I zoomed in through that the the lens and I took another picture and I zoomed in through the picture and I saw craters of the moon like the little crater and I was like oh my god <laughs> like I I was so happy and it just I started wanted like to see more and zoom in more and then I got a bigger lens and a mm -hmm. bigger lens and then I ended up get, getting a telescope okay because it just I was so happy to see the moon and um, and the telescope just I saw the, the details in the moon and I was mind blown so I started sharing that on Instagram and 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 things went really well because a lot of people loved it 
the first few images I, I shared and instantly I started having radio stations reposting it on Instagram. I had, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Niall deGrasse Tyson, his, his radio station is called Star Talk Radio. He's a big name in space. Okay. One of my first pictures of the moon I shared, it was reposted by his radio station. And I was like, wow. And I immediately went viral from the first picture. Wow. And I was like, great. You know, uh, I, I started developing more techniques. I read a few books. I learned a few things to get, you know, the high dynamic range pictures. You know, you see the moon sometimes when you get the glow, you yes. see the moon is white. So I have techniques to bring it in the picture, compositing it. You know, sometimes we add several pictures together and I always disclose that. Wow. But, but basically, that's how it started. And uh, with pictures, I started evolving to, to, be, to do a little bit of video making, video editing, and video production. That's so amazing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sounds like a beautiful beginning. And, and you said, okay, you had this camera that you bought with your first, uh, with, with a, a monetary award from your graduation. Right. And uh, and then it was a zoom lens, it was like a kit lens or something like that, like a yeah, it, yeah. It was a T six S camera and um, and a cheap lens. I think it was an eighteen to one thirty five. Yeah. yeah, something like oh yeah yeah yeah. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah. I yeah yeah I used that setup and basically I took a lot of pictures using that setup and uh, mm -hmm. I, I shared a lot of pictures from my camera i put some pictures on website and i put them under under creative commons license which yes. is those pictures are free for all like anyone can use them they're so kind <laughs> yeah and 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 some of my pictures are on wikipedia you know if you google some stuff the city i lived in i took a picture of the yes. campus and when you go to wikipedia you see you can see my picture there so so I love to contribute and, and give things, you know, and uh, and see my work displayed in, in places. That's beautiful, Rami. I really love your point of view about sharing knowledge and sharing uh, this kind of uh, art, because in the end, the money is uh, for everybody, right? Like, right. And then you make it more accessible with your pictures. I yeah, love that. You. Yes. Okay. From your point of view, what is needed to start in astrophotography? I think you mentioned something about like being a little bit curious and self-taught and uh, reading about it. But tell me uh, from your experience, what do you think is needed to start in this? There are many ways to start. Okay. Um, I think where to start is doing some of some research. Okay you know, doing some of your own research, you know, what is the best telescope? There is no one best telescope. Uh, okay. the, the, best, the best telescope is really the telescope you use the most. Okay. But from a beginner perspective, the, mm -hmm. cheapest, the cheapest way to start is buying a cheap telescope, a cell phone mount, and use the cell phone mount to take mm -hmm. pictures to take pictures with your cell phone from the telescope oh wow so you can do that you can start literally with a hundred dollars okay and then you will use your cell phone to take pictures and you know you would be able to see the moon planets you would be able to see stuff that's a very good economic way to start all right now the, the other there are other techniques you know you can buy a camera, a tripod, and a lens. Okay. And then you're you're gonna be looking at a five to six hundred dollars budget, and uh, you will go from there. Now, the, the, one of the things is that this hobby is a little bit expensive if you want to go far with it. Okay. So, uh, you know, a little by little, you will you should invest in in, in equipment, and uh, you know, you have to have a vision where you want to go. Yes. Yeah, with, with, with the hobby so like for example i saw myself using the a telescope for years so i immediately jumped from the lens to mm -hmm. a big telescope um, oh, okay the telescope that i use until today the, my 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 five inch refractor okay. and i can send you i can send you a list of all the equipment i have 
Okay. And I invested in it. I I had to finance it, and I it took me a year to pay it. Okay. And, but but it was worth it because I knew I will be taking pictures of it. I knew where I was heading in social media and so forth. Now, mm-hmm. if you're if you don't have a vision, do not spend a lot of money. If you if you feel oh I just want to see the moon, really uh, you can buy uh, you can buy a Dobsonian telescope for five hundred dollars and you can see all the details of the moon with your eyes, and you can see the planets. You can see anything with it. It's not, but it's not the greatest for photography. Okay. So, so there are many ways, really. And, you know, it's like, you know, asking someone what brand of car you want to buy, really. There's mm-hmm. no one brand. There's no one brand. So exactly. it depends on the individual, what they want to do, you know, and uh, their purposes. Exactly. So you have to be like really thoughtful uh, when you're doing this kind of investment uh, and think about like, okay, is this really a hobby? Is this is something that I want to do for a long time? It's just a fever, how we call it like that. And just for the moment, really good. And I, I, I saw the other day at the toy store nearby a telescope that was on discount. And I was like, mm, I'm going to ask Rami first if I should get that telescope it's because maybe it doesn't worth it. But if you say so, if it is just for curiosity, maybe I should give it a try. Yeah, yeah, give it a try. If you want to see it, it's always a different experience to see it with a telescope. What what I what I kind of noticed with with some people is that oh my god, I want to buy a telescope. Okay. They buy the, they buy the telescope, and they don't figure out how to use it. Mm. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a video. I have one company sending me a small beginner telescope. Oh wow! I'm That's gonna cool. I'm, I'm gonna do a review with it. I'm gonna do how I'm gonna do a how to to use it, and so forth. People like to know these things because yes. uh, I've heard the stories that some people bought telescopes. They did not know how to use it. They just put it there as a decoration at home. Yes. And you know you don't want to do that. You know uh, telescopes if they're you know can be white elephants. You know a white mm-hmm. elephant is something you did is big that you did not want. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so yeah. You, you know uh, it's it's I have I have a hundred dollar I have two hundred dollars telescope and I yes. have four thousand dollars telescope and I use them. Mm-hmm. I use all of them. So so you know. It, it really depends. I mean, it, it's a nice thing to have. You know, sometimes you would have something going on in the sky. You want to see it. Yes. It's yes. Cool. That's really cool. And I, I, I saw on, on many of your TikToks, I don't know, maybe they were like two, that you were trying to capture the, the station, like coming around. And it's so difficult because it's going so fast. Yeah. 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 My back hurts me sometimes from trying to, to, uh, to follow it. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, yeah, there are many tools to, to help you. Yes. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of demand on telescope telescopes after COVID. Yes. Because people stayed at home. They had nothing just to look at the sky. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, there are many, many resources on the Internet. Uh, you know, if you want to see, you have to know when the moon rises, when the moon sets. You know, what's the moon? What's the lunar phase, the lunar calendar? Yes. What's, what's what's in the sky and it's very easy you know just google just google stuff and it will pop up right for you and i think with this explanation you just answered the next question uh, i was going to ask you in what are the you know important technical re- requirements in astrophotography and i think it's what you just said is knowledge yes yes exactly. knowledge knowledge on what's going on astronomically knowledge mm-hmm. of your equipment mm-hmm. uh, one really important feature in astrophotography you have to get a tracker for your camera tracker so, so your camera would be sitting on the tracker because the stars are moving because of okay. the rotation so okay a, a tracker for your camera or your telescope is crucial because you are just following the stars to do long exposures, for example. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the knowledge with the gear, you have to know what type of gear you want. And astrophotography also branches into few things, you know. Yes. Astrophotography can be, 
can be you know if you want to you can do the planets yes so you can you can zoom in really far do planets or you can go wide and do the milky way wow the, yeah so that will not require a telescope you just need a wide angle lens so you know you have to know what kind of astrophotography you're into i did almost all of them yes. uh, I, I, I the least i did is solar because i don't have a solar telescope yeah and but that's I, dangerous by the way because you 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 made a a tiktok about it if can you explain yes yeah yeah so the sun can be dangerous yeah because the, the telescope you know magnifies things so technically it's a magnifying glass it, it it condenses the light in in a, in a tiny spot and if you put anything behind the lens if you watch the video it burned the cardboard instantly yes so imagine putting an eye there it, wow. it's gonna be a, it would be a disaster a nightmare so, especially with kids around if you have a telescope like just like lying there and and they don't know because probably they are innocent right like wow yeah and they are curious yeah exactly yeah i love that i love that what you did with the with your tiktok it was like really educational i was like shocked and like oh my god that's right oh wow and what are the important and non-technical requirements to become or you know to do this as an astrophotographer because you mentioned before knowledge is one of the most important studying a lot the faces of the moon how the, the the earth rotate and this and that and how to operate your uh, camera or telescope but the non-technical requirements non-technical requirements um you know you have to have time yes. have, and uh, you have to stay up at night sometimes um non-technical I am not sure. You know, you need you need a fast computer. You need you need a computer that can take weightlifting with your images too. Okay. Not sure if that falls into the technical category, but okay. those are things that are required. At the end, you will need to use a you will need to use a computer. You will need to use uh, software. Some mm -hmm. of the software are uh, are free. Yes, um, but others are paid, and the paid software can be very expensive. So you can see where this hobby can be can be very expensive in terms of gear, software yes. that you have to purchase. Yes, time. You know, during winter, during winter, you have you know it's very cold outside. Yes, and uh, during summer it's very hot, and there are yeah. mosquitoes everywhere. <laughs> you know. And how is a regular session with you? I mean, uh, how many hours? And how many photos can you take in one session? Like, for example, did you take some pictures last night? Yes, I took some moon pictures and I took videos. Now, when we say taking pictures, you know, when the number of pictures, sometimes I take 500, mm. 500 clicks and then I, I stack some, I filter some. Um, it, it really depends on what I am shooting. You okay. Know? With the moon, it ranges between 100 to 500. Sometimes okay. I got 600 pictures and then I filter stack some of them. Um, if I am shooting a deep sky image, uh, it's it takes, you know, I would say you would need 200 pictures, but they, but they vary. Um, it really depends, you know, the session, the, the session can be from one hour to four hours of shooting outside. So at least 100 pictures for the moon and then it ranges between 40 to 200 pictures if i'm doing a deep sky mm -hmm. and, and so forth and the timing of the session really uh, varies and this is this is the shooting time and of course there will be editing time later yes so the editing time really depends can be one to five or six hours depending on what i am doing wow that's a lot of time yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are the common mistakes when you're starting? Common mistakes when when starting. Uh, over processing your image. Uh, for example, they 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 increase the sharpening too much, mm -hmm. and then the image blows up. It becomes noisy and it's speckled. And that's one mistake. Yes. Uh, they would think more expensive is better 
uh, but it's not always the case, you know. Yes. Uh, what are other mistakes that I see? Uh, editing errors, you know, like some stuff would look very artificial. Like you can tell that they just put the moon this next to a building, for example. Oh, yeah. So you can see, yeah, the unnatural appearance, um, other mistakes. Um, yeah, basically, those are the most common mistakes I see astrophotographers do. Okay. And so from a photography perspective, okay. yeah, you can see artifacts in the pictures. Now, from a social media perspective, uh, they just put something that people don't understand. You know, they don't explain it. They don't tell a story. So that's from a social media perspective, too. Okay. In one of your TikTok videos, you answered the question, how expensive was or is your setup? And for beginners and enthusiasts, what to look into a gear to start diving into astrophotography? You mentioned that you, we, we can start with a cheap telescope and a telephone, right? Yes. But if perfect. we want to take it like mid-level, what do you recommend? At the moment, which camera are you using and which lens? We know we, that you have a very expensive telescope, but tell us about your lenses and, and your camera. Yes, uh, the telescope is a mid instruments uh, refractor telescope. It's a five inch triplet refractor. Uh, it gives you tr the true colors of what you're seeing. Yes. Uh, it's a little bit heavy and big, but it, it, it is a very high quality. Yes. Now for the camera, I use a Canon 90D. Oh, wow. Yeah, I use a Canon DSLR 90D. I, you know, surprisingly with everything I do, I do not use an astronomical dedicated camera. Oh, yeah. and what would it be like a, a dedicated a, astronomical? A, a dedicated astronomical camera is, is a, a CC, it's called a CCD camera that you place it on the telescope. Mm. But you have you have to connect it to to a computer, and then you there will be a lot of wires involved. Oh, there has to be a laptop associated with the telescope and so forth. So, I like to keep things simple. Uh, DSLR yes. has been DSLR camera, the Canon ninety D has been doing really well. Yes. Before the Canon ninety D, I had a T six S camera. Uh, yes. It's a crop a crop sensor camera. Yes. The 90D is also a crop sensor camera, but mm -hmm. it's a better it's a better quality. And I have a full full frame yes a full frame uh, a Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh huh. And I, and I use it for long exposures for you know mil the Milky Way shots. Yes. Now the, the the two types of cameras that I have, you know, there are two types. There's the crop sensor it has a smaller sensor, but it's, yes. it's more it's more compact. It's lighter. It's for, you know, not all users, you know, the, the the, there are limitations to a crop sensor. The full frame image, uh, the full frame cameras are, um, you know, they have bigger sensors, bigger images, and they do overall, they do better than crop sensors. Mm -hmm. So I have both types and I mainly use the SLR cameras in my photography. And the lenses? The lenses, I have I have the refractor that we just discussed. Um, I have also a Canon 100 to 400 millimeter. Okay. Uh, image stabilized. Um, it's called IS2, the version okay. 2. It has an image stabilizer in it. It's, you know, it's mainly used for wildlife and okay. sport, but I use it for the moon. Um, it's a very nice lens um, and it, it, it got more expensive since I bought it. Yes. I, I also have, I have a wide angle lens that's a 24 to 70 millimeter Mark II telephoto yes. lens for Canon also. I have the um, Celestron Edge HD, Okay. Uh, the, uh, the 11 inch HHC, it's about 30 pounds, almost like 15 kilograms. It's very heavy. Wow. I, I use that when I need a, a very far zoom on a planet, for example. Oh, nice. Yeah. And for beginners, what is your recommendation? You said, okay, we can start with a cheap telescope and a telephone. Yeah. But for example, me, I'm really curious and I would like to start diving in astrophotography. I have a Canon. Um, R6 and I also have a Mark III 
5D Mark III is like really old. But um, yeah, maybe I can use that for, uh, you know, to start. So do you recommend me to get that telescope of 40 euros or something a little bit like higher? You can, you can, you can use the, your camera on that telescope. Okay. So you can attach it. No matter how cheap your telescope is, you would still get a good picture with a good camera. Mm, I'm going to give it a try then. That's yeah, yeah. So you should get a T mount. It's called a T mount. T mount. It's a, yes, it's an attachment. You put it on the camera and, and then you place it on the telescope and you tighten the screw and now you can take pictures uh, with, the, uh, with the camera. And of course, there is, there is a focuser on mm -hmm. your telescope it's something that brings the camera close you know yes or far and that that way you can focus on your you can get the image in focus or not not blurry and i would start there because if you already have the camera just try it with a small telescope see what you okay do. okay i'll i promise i will text you if i yeah if yeah, I, yeah sure <laughs> when i get sure. the telescope that sounds amazing uh, and now, because we already spoke about uh, 400 pictures or, so, or sometimes 100 pictures, how is your editing process? You start like uh, cooling and, edit and editing and how do you end up? I mean, how many pictures did you end up with? Yeah, so basically it depends. Um, for moon photography, I usually take 100 to 400 images and then I I do. I did a video on my processing one time on how I put all these images and then I stack them together. Okay. So basically, <laughs> I do some processing on these images and I use some soft, some form of software called planetary imaging pre-processing, and I center the moon in the center mm -hmm. on all the pictures. Then I then it outputs to me all the centered pictures then i take all these centered pictures and i stack them together in another software called auto stacker 3. Oh, wow the auto stacker 3 goes through all the images and stacks stacks them together and that way i can get a very sharp image i can increase the saturation and I can remove the blurriness and the atmospheric turbulence from the picture. So that way I can get a very clear picture. And then there is the, the, the second step of editing where I go to Photoshop and then I merge a normal exposure of the moon with a longer exposure, with a long overexposure to put the glow in and add the features where you know, adding the stars in the background and so forth. But basically it's all blending real images into one image through, through several techniques. And that's why it, take, it takes time yes. to, to, to get the final image. And um, hearing all this and all the work that it takes to, to be an astrophotographer and how you make those beautiful images that you said, you share them with the world for free. Do you also sell them or it's just like, this is how I, it is? I, I do not officially sell my pictures yet. Okay. Uh, I, I believe it or not, I've been doing this for seven years. Uh, I have a plan to start making money from this, but I haven't been making any money, almost no money. Uh, some people ask me to, um, to, you know, to, to get a file of a picture mm -hmm. to print. And, uh, you know, sometimes they pay me for it just, just, you know, because they appreciate. Yes. So they, they, you know, they pay a little bit. So, you know, the work is, is appreciated, but technically, um, for making money, I will, I have a plan to put an online store for prints. Yes. But, but so far I am not officially selling my, my pictures unless someone asks them and they really want to, to, to print them themselves. Sounds like a great idea if you create your online shop with all your prints. I'm sure people mm -hmm. are going to get, you know, crazy buying your, your images. They are amazing. Yeah. Hopefully. And, and I, I hope to hear from your store really soon. I know it's a lot of uh, responsibility, you know, and it involves a lot of time plus the time you invest making those pictures. So yeah. I understand. Oh, so tell me, after all the success on social media and the collaborations you have had with uh, Adobe and 
numerous contributions with magazines. Have you ever considered astrophotography as a full-time job in the future? Um, um, maybe, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, but, well, the short answer, I don't think I will do this full-time. Okay. Because my main profession, I, I spent 13 years studying to do my main profession. Yes. Uh, maybe I'll become a full-time astrophotographer when I retire from my job, but but until then, I, I think it will be, it will just remain as as a hobby or passion oh, that I work for. That sounds uh, amazing because, uh, okay, many of us uh, change our path, but you have it very clear. I mean, I was, uh, my, my, my real background is uh, I'm a graphic designer and I got like really, really tired of working for agencies and I've discovered this passion in food photography that I find like super interesting, like especially when I use my macro lens and I go into the details and I fell in love with uh, the, the magic of seeing through a lens, all the beauty that you can have there in one plate. And yeah. some of us, we, we, we switch, but I really admire your honest opinion about the astrophotography is something that you also really love combine with your real profession it's mm. really amazing okay what is the sky for an astrophotographer in terms of what would it be what will be that picture that you want to capture and what is that what is necessary to make that happen the picture that i want to take yes like something that is like super challenging and still okay you are working for it like you are studying how to make it and how to make it perfect do you have uh, something that you really, really want to capture and you haven't still? Yes, I, um, I, I you know, the, the, there are many things that I want to capture. I want to capture the biggest image of the moon that you could ever, ever imagine. All right. But that will take a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. I still have not utilized my largest telescope to do it. Uh, the other thing is I want to go to a very dark place yes. where I can do those deep sky, deep sky images with the galaxies and so forth. I have all the equipment, but I have not done it yet mm -hmm. properly. Uh, all the deep sky I have been doing is, is from my backyard here and it's been not good. I'll be honest with you. Deep, deep sky. I'm deep sky imaging is, is something I'm not very strong at. Yes. But one reason is that I I am I do not have time to go to dark sites. Yes. Uh, but yeah, those are two things. Like I want to take really good deep sky images, mm -hmm. and I've been working on it, and and it it takes time to learn it. Still, you know, I have not done it the way that I really I really like. So hopefully in the future. Great. All right. Okay, and now to close this uh, beautiful interview, do you have uh, any recommendations to all enthusiasts to, you know, who are willing to start in astrophotography? What is your advice? Like, what would you say to Rami probably like five years ago when you were starting or something like that? Uh, I Honestly, I would say... I would say I, I did very well. I did a good job with the track because the way I started, I, I read a whole book on astrophotography before I started. I do not think I could have done it differently, really. Like the way I, it's, I mean, I planned it very well. So my advice for anyone who wants to do astrophotography is plan your path very well. Yes do your own studying, invest, maybe maybe before you buy a telescope, invest in an astrophotography book. I have the, the book that I started with is, is an astrophotographer called Theory, Theory Legault. Okay. Uh, it, it, the book is called Astrophotography. He is a French astrophotographer. And that book is still with me until today with the information that I am using. So... I think that would be my best advice. All right. I'm going to leave all that information here in the description box of the episode, all the resources that Rami is sharing with us. 
And I would like to thank you, Rami, for your time and your knowledge and your for sharing with us your passion. So let me remind you here, uh, all the social medias, uh, all the social medias uh, where you can find uh, Rami and it's uh, on Instagram. Uh, you have uh, Rami underscore Astro and it's the same uh, in TikTok. So I'm going to leave everything here where you can find him. You can text him. He's like super kind. Uh, I couldn't believe he answered my DM because uh, TikTok sometimes is uh, impossible and uh, I don't have like those, that many followers. I'm just there for fun. To, to check what others are doing to relax and disconnect and I found him and I was like whoa blown away with his with his talent and his photography and his journey and all the videos and storytelling he's sharing with everybody Rami thank you so much for sharing with us everything you know and for sharing your journey I'm so happy to have you here I'm gonna give you a few minutes to say something to the audience uh, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to talk to you and meet you. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's very humbling, you know, how people look at, look at us when we have bigger, uh, bigger social media account, but mm -hmm. we really, at the end, we really are, are like most people. And, uh, what I think what made me successful with, I, I wouldn't say what made the account successful is the emotions I put in the work. So always find the find the niche you have, find the passion you have, put your put your work in your passion and put your love in the work you do and uh, you will get wherever you want. Everything is about love. That's yeah. it. Thank yeah. you so much, Rami. And well, thank you. you everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.